Hi, everybody. I'm Kelly Hogan. Welcome back to my Zero Carb Life. I am joined here today by Bella. Bella is known on Instagram as Steak and Butter Gal, and I feel like we have become really dear friends in the past several months that I've gotten to know her, and I really want you guys to get to know her too. Hi, Bella. Hi, Kelly. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to hang out with you. We have a lot of things in common. We're going to talk through some of those today. I spend a lot of time helping out in Facebook groups. And the other day, someone posted one of your videos about why you don't use salt. And so many people commented to say, who is that? I love that video. So tell people, how did you start eating this way? What brought you here? So I started the carnivore diet officially January 1st of 2019. So I am almost at the two year mark of being carnivore. And before eating the carnivore diet, I was a very strict vegan, whole foods, plant-based vegan. And I was eating that diet for six years straight. So um, yeah, when I'm like committed to anything really, diet especially, I really just go all in. So I really gave the six years all of my best to the vegan diet, hoping that I would heal, hoping that my weight would finally drop, that my period would come back, but it just was not budging. Like none of the benefits were rolling in anymore and it was just going downhill. So I became really desperate by the fifth year already because my period was gone. Um, I wasn't having a period at all. And I went to go get my blood tested uh, at my doctor here in New York City. And she did a full panel blood test where she really checked everything there is to check. And she sat me down after just telling me that I was extremely deficient in so many things, especially the iron, especially the vitamin D. I remember she sat me down and told me that my vitamin D is the lowest that she's ever seen in her patients. Yeah. So it was just very scary. And she kind of slapped me back to reality saying that you either have to start taking supplements or just eat some animal foods, eat some meat because she believed that the nutrients are in the meat. So I thank her for kind of just waking me up. But then I started obsessively researching what I can do as a six-year vegan. And that's when I came across all these videos and content online about vegans turning carnivore. And I was just attracted to that. Um, so that's how I became exposed to the carnivore diet. And was it a gradual change or was it like, no. boom? Oh, it was boom, just gosh. overnight. Yeah. How did your body handle that? It it didn't really handle it so well. Okay. Um, the, the, the overnight thing was just something that I, I guess I just couldn't wait to just get started because I he heard and I read all of these amazing stories and transformations of other carnivores. And so I just wanted to get the ball ro rolling already. And it was kind of like a New Year's resolution to myself that I would just finally focus on healing. Um, so when I started the carnivore diet, I remember my very first meal was eggs, scrambled eggs with Kerrygold butter. Um, that was what I was craving. That was what I was dreaming of before I went carnivore. Actually, I just kept dreaming about eggs and butter. You grew up eating a lot of eggs, butter, egg pudding yes. and stuff, right? Yes. I yeah. grew up eating all of that. And my mom really loved cooking her Chinese meat dishes, lots of beef. My okay. favorite dish of hers was like this Korean style barbecue beef dish, just very animal food based, very heavy on animal foods. How did she feel about you being a vegan for six years? She was so mad. She was so <laughs> upset. Yeah. And she, like, I see my mom as a tiger mama. So she really, really tried to convince all throughout those six years. Um, you know, she tried to convince me to stop eating just veggies. She just really wanted me to eat the meat already. So you and I have some similarities. And the first one is that we are both musicians. I went to a state school and if I worked really hard at it, I could play the hymnal for a local church. And you graduated from Juilliard with two instruments. So kind of the same, same, same. Yeah, I see that as the same. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we both play piano, but you graduated with piano and violin, correct? So I graduated with a master's degree in piano performance, but while I was there, I was studying uh, with a violin professor. So I kind of just juggled with both those two years, but the degree itself is in piano performance. Okay, I love watching you. I, I love Aww. slash hate watching you. I'm going to be honest. <laughs> Because I'm like, man, that is so good. And I'm also like, man, that is so good. 
<laughs> and here's what I do when I play piano on my Instagram account. Um, my little one, she's so cute and she's got these stuffed animals. So I'm like, Annie, you want to come watch mommy play piano? And she's like, okay. And she makes them fly and it's a diversion. I know you know that's what Aww. I'm doing. It's totally <laughs> what I'm doing. I'm like, just, Annie, do you want to fly your eagle while mommy plays the piano? And and I clunk my way through Billy Joel and she's adorable and nobody really notices what I'm playing. And then I go oh to your God. channel and you know, <laughs> You don't need Simba to play with a stuffed animal like you really know how to play piano, but it's cool. It's all good. When you first started Carnivore, another thing we have in common is I had already done, unlike you, I had done low carb, almost Carnivore mm. for some time before that. But when I officially switched to Carnivore and got like green light from the community, eat all the fatty meat, girl. And I did. I gained weight. Mm -hmm. And you did too. And yes. And I think this is a part of the story that I'll be honest, I don't love talking about because I think yeah. it scares people. Yeah. But I see it happen enough in people that I think we just need to talk about it. So how did that go? Tell me how your weight gain went. So my weight gain started from the very beginning, from the first day of going carnivore. And it happened because I kind of see myself approaching the carnivore diet as an all-in way of eating um a good reference actually there's this youtuber she coined it i'm not sure if she coined it but she really promoted her going all in her name is stephanie buttermore and a lot of my friends on instagram uh told me oh you look just like stephanie buttermore and then it just made me realize like what she's doing or what she just went through on her youtube channel she went all in because she found that her appetite was so ravenous so insatiable that no matter how much she ate she just would always think about food, that she would always be hungry. She would want to eat more. So she promised her body to just go all in, eat as much as her heart desired, stop when she's full, do it again if she needed to. And that's kind of what I did when I went into the carnivore diet, because I was just so sick of being hungry, of being malnourished, of always obsessing over food when I was vegan. Now, I can't say that the vegan diet started those bad habits, but it definitely, you know, contributed yeah. to my bad eating habits. And I could say that I was doing a lot of bulimic eating type of habits where I would eat so, so much, feel so, so guilty and dive into starving, just starve until I feel like I'm happy with, you know, eating less. And then I would do it all over again. It was just very detrimental on my mental health, on my energy, just my ability to focus on school. Um, so when I started the carnivore diet, I just promised myself, I'm going all in. I'm just going to eat when I'm hungry. If the weight gain happens, it happens. Kelly Hogan gained weight. She lost it after a while, you know? Yes. Yeah. I, your story really inspired me and it just, did you know that uh, I had gained yes. weight? Yes. You did? Yes, I did. Oh. Yeah. I talked That's to Sean cool. Baker and I gave you so much credit because seriously, like your story alone was like my hanging, my hanging piece to just go through. Um, but so yeah, cool. the, <laughs> the weight gain was hard. It was yes. so hard. 20, 25, 28 pounds ish okay. of weight gain, just constantly gaining, gaining, gaining. My clothes were fitting tighter. Yep. Every time I look in the mirror, it was just harder and harder. Um, but you know, I just pushed myself because I was feeling better. I was seriously feeling yes. so good. Yeah. Yes. And people have said to me, oh, but I bet it was, you were gaining muscle. And I'm like, no, I wasn't. I wasn't no. gaining muscle. No. It was fluff, like fluffy yeah. feeling. <laughs> yeah. Now I will, my 20, mine was about 20 pounds. I was trying very hard to not weigh myself much because I had been so obsessive, Yeah. but I still did. And it, it was about 20 pounds and it came on slowly for about six months for me. Mm -hmm. I was eating three, three and a half pounds of meat per day. Like you, yeah. starving yeah and, and people have said did you start eating less at the six month mark <sighs> I did but here's what I think is so important for people to understand I did not make myself start eating less at that point right. I don't think I could have so if at the four month mark I had decided okay that's it I'm gonna eat a lot less meat because I can't take it this is the part that I want clarified by hearing what you have to say too sure for me, I think I was so hungry that it was part of the process imperative that I eat for that six months. If I had just decided, okay, four months is it. That's it. I'm going to cut back to two pounds per day. I don't think I could have. I have right. a lot of willpower, 
But I don't think, first of all, I don't think I could have withstood that. I was so ravenous. And secondly, I don't think it would have helped anything. I think it was important. Do you feel that same way? Yes. Everything you're saying resonates so much. Um, Those six months, even if I even just cut back one steak, I was actually eating up to four to five steaks, four to five pounds sometimes. But if I even just cut down on one steak, there's no way I could even fall asleep. All I would think about is to just eat some more. Um, So it like it's to the point where it would just mess with my sanity. I just needed it so bad, so bad. And when I had my first taste of the very first carnivore food, the scrambled eggs, Uh um, my my body felt like it was levitating. Yes. 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 The euphoria was so real. And then when I ate the beef, it was like, this feels so right. I'm just going to go all in. I just have to, because there's nothing to lose. So I felt great, but the weight was really gaining. And, you know, during those six months, I was still in school and it was very uh, hard because walking to school, I have to go to class. I have to perform in front of my classmates. And I think the only thing that kept me going was just focusing on how great I felt. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would pack the steak bites, the butter sticks, everything that I could pack to school just to make sure that my mind cannot wander off to feeling insecure. I just needed to fuel my brain so that I felt satiated. And when I feel satiated, I feel this surge of energy and happiness and confidence. So that really helped keep me together and not fall into this dark hole because I was gaining weight. So I did freak out. And what you're saying about knowing at least one other person, I'm so honored that I could be that person for you. No, but you were. Mm-hmm. I knew some people also in the zeroing in on health community. One lady, she went by Nebraska. Nebraska said, uh, honey, we have seen this happen plenty of times before. You will never get fat just eating meat. Yeah. Your body needs this. And she kept telling me, focus on health. She said, don't you want to have a baby? That was part of my big why is I had stopped having yes. a cycle. Yes. She said, If you want to be healthy and you want to have a baby, you need to keep your mind on that goal and not on the scale. You've been skinny, but you got there without being healthy. And she was so right. Oh, my gosh. Um, But even if just having one or two examples, that's what I really hope people can take from this today is the scale may go up a little. And also, disclaimer, it really, for most people, doesn't, right? For most people... If you especially have a lot of weight to lose and you're coming from a standard American diet where you have been eating a lot of food and now you're going to cut to just you're going to cut out the carbs and eat all the meat, you will probably start losing weight. But I want the people who are gaining to see, yep, it might happen. You will not end up obese eating steak. You just won't. And in all likelihood, your appetite will change, but you need to give your body what it's asking for because it's screaming. Exactly. I really, really try to stress that like every day because a majority of the uh, DMs that I get, the friends that reach out to me are ladies just like us who have had a restrictive or bad eating history, maybe the vegan diet or vegetarian or just a lot of counting calories and restriction. And ladies who have had that history, they need to heal. They need to focus on healing first um, before they can even focus on you know, losing weight or keeping a regular weight. Um, So I think the carnivore diet is perfect for people like that, for ladies like us who need to heal our metabolism, our hormones. Like you said, I want to have babies too. So it's just a peace of mind to know that my period is healthy and regular. Yes. It took several months for mine to get regular. And then I immediately got pregnant. And that's awesome. Yeah. It, it yeah. is. That was one of my primary goals. And then to know that, you know, through three pregnancies to be able for weight to then return. It's not like I've just continued gaining that weight. People yeah. just need to, to see health can come back and weight can can maintain pretty easily. Now, that yes. said, how many times per day do you tend to eat? So nowadays, it's actually gradually switching to two, two times okay. a day. Um, but before that, when I was busy going to school and stuff, that whole half year, it was about one meal a day. Yeah. OMAD. Um, and 
I try not to promote fasting so much right. because people can go overboard with that, yes. especially the ladies who yes. watch my content and who are obsessed with losing weight. I mean, there's nothing wrong with wanting to feel confident in your body and no. for wanting to lose weight. But if you're going to use fasting as a way to quickly lose weight, you know, when you're trying to heal as well with a carnivore diet, I don't think that's a great combo, especially for new carnivores. Yeah. Um, but these days I just eat when hungry. So that tends to fall into two meals a day now. I am assuming that when you do eat, well, I know this because I watch you eat, <laughs> you eat a large meal mm -hmm. and then you typically wait until you are ready for another large meal to eat again. Yes. I think when people hear folks like us, I can almost hear the skeptics saying, well, I eat all day long as much as I want on carnivore and I'm still gaining weight a year later. I've seen yep. it last longer than six months. Yep. But what I tell them is I don't graze all day long on cheese cubes first yes. of all i know that you and i are also similar we have to be very cautious with our dairy yes especially right. non-butter dairy cheese. exactly cheese. Yep. it's yes. very addicting yes um and so if someone is grazing all day long on cheese cubes they are not in touch with their hunger signals and i do right. think that some people have a hard time actually knowing when they're hungry and i do think a good way to get in touch with that. Some people say fasting, but I really feel like it's feasting. Have a huge feast mm -hmm. of meat and some non-addictive foods. I know de deli meats, pepperonis, and cheeses can be even kind of addicting as carnivore foods. Yeah. Like I'm out of, at least it makes me feel out of control. Right. So if you're eating steak and eggs, mm -hmm. a huge meal, and then you wait until you're ready to do that again, it's probably not going to be more than twice a day for most people. I totally agree. Definitely focus on whole unprocessed animal yes. foods. So I would say butter is the only exception. Besides the butter, you know, steak, eggs, yeah. and that's it. If you add seasonings, fine. Um, but I personally feel like when I just eat the meat, the butter, and the eggs only with no salt, no seasonings. I'm really in tune with my hunger signals, with my satiety, and I know exactly when to stop and I know exactly when I should start eating again. Yes. Okay. So salt, girl, <laughs> right. so controversial. Mm -hmm. um, I know so many carnivores that are crazy strict one way or the other, either add all of the salt because you have to, it is life, you will die without it, yeah. or... I know plenty of carnivores who say, I don't add salt at all. If I eat one steak at a restaurant that has been salted, they get issues. They either have gut, belly problems, or um, more often what I hear is they're up at night with leg cramps. So yep. you've got one group of people saying, if I don't have salt, I get leg cramps. And another group, it is a very complex issue. And I try to just tell people, you know, what works for you. I know you say that too. Yeah. I think it's worth trying. If whatever you're yeah. doing isn't working, don't you think it's worth trying the other way though? Totally. Yeah. When I went into this community of low carb, zero carb carnivore and keto, because I feel like a lot of these diets can be blended. Yeah. Um, I, that was the one thing that I saw so, so much of electrolytes, you know, yes. salt up, pour the salt into your mouth if you have to. Um, and there were times where I really experimented with that uh -huh. because obviously I'm always striving to feel my best. Right. Yeah. So I did this whole experiment and I made a video about it where I really up the salt, of course, in a safe manner. I'm not going to just one day, all of a sudden add all the right. salt, but I gradually built up to quite a large amount of salt. And the more more I added, the worse I felt. And I really yes. thought, okay, this is just adaptation phase. Mm -hmm. So after a few weeks, it just never got better. So I think no matter what science says for these diets, like if you have to have electrolytes to stay healthy, you have to experiment and give it a try for yourself before you just go all in with all of these rules. Your lifestyle, your needs, your body composition, maybe even your ethnicity, uh, it all matters. And yeah. so this is why experimentation, I feel like is so important. So I'm just glad I did give the salt a try, but I never had the cravings for salt from the very beginning. That's another thing. Just listen to what your body craves too. Yes. Yeah. Once you say that all the time too. I yeah. do. And I always have, you, know, you have to preface it with once you're off of addictive substances like donuts. Right. Yeah. You cannot listen to your body when you're an addict. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> if you smoke cigarettes and you're like, I don't know, my body's asking for it. No. <laughs> yes, exactly. Doesn't 
count if you're on an addictive substance and sugar counts. Yes. But once you're free from that, I sometimes salt tastes so good to me. Mm -hmm. And then other times, if something is salted, even a little bit, ugh, it's too oh yeah. It's so, like this metallic taste too, yes. too much. Yes, yes, I know what you mean. That's the point that I got to when I first started. When it was like middle minimal amounts, I really enjoyed the food. Yeah. But maybe for me, like it kind of went overboard. Like I need to eat more because it's so good. But I think if you can find that fine balance where you feel great and you can eat just the right amount with the salt, that's great. Um, but too much for me, I got that tang, like metallic taste. Yes. Um, I do know a few carnivores who absolutely love salt, but they okay. literally can't use it because they get, they get symptoms. They, oh. they get crampy. And so they enjoy the taste I, that I will say is very unusual. I yeah. think that for most people, if you kind of follow your tastes on salt, I feel like my body lets me know when I've had enough, it just starts to taste bad. Um, it, I love butter, but when, when I have had enough fat, there is nothing more gross than trying to shove butter in your mouth when you really don't need it. Yes. Yes. I mean, really, I can't, I almost gag at the thought of eating butter when right. I'm not hungry and my body does not need fat. Then exactly. a plate of just meat is perfect. And I would about hurt you if you try to put butter on it. Right. And then other, then other days, you know, I'm just taking hunks out of it. <laughs> Yeah. Right. That's why this diet is so great. I think it's because it's so nutrient dense mm -hmm. and all the flavors are there. You don't have to add anything art artificial and your body knows to, you know, turn on like I want more and turn it off. I'm full. And I know new carnivores are like, what the crap is she talking about? <laughs> yeah. I remember when I first started, I didn't even know if I was hungry. I, I was just yeah. constantly hungry. And I <laughs> right, right. Things. I'm just throwing everything in my face. Oh my God. That's, yeah. That's fine. Right. You're it's starting fine. out. It's fine. Yeah. Do it. But I do think eventually with more and more time, you just start to get more sensitive to what you actually want and need. Yes, I, I agree. Okay. Talk to me about the steak and butter gang. You've started <laughs> a new group. Tell oh, me about yeah. this. So this is something that I started out of requests for a support group. Mm -hmm. So I got a lot of messages saying, Hey, you, do you have any type of system where we can, you know, keep each other accountable through the holidays, especially because I know everybody is worried about falling off track, yeah. gaining a bunch of weight. So I just came up with this idea. I'll start a private group, but I really wanted it to be off social media. So I created the steak and butter gang on that platform. And it's up to like almost 500 members now. And seriously, the things that are going on, the topics, the posts, the questions, it is so supportive, so positive. And it's like a safe haven for carnivores who just want to learn and improve. It's just a link. You click it and there is just a few steps just because I don't want any trolls or vegans. Mm -hmm. So you just put your name, your email and why you want to join and you should be approved and you can just start learning and contributing. Oh, good. I know that would be so helpful to people. By the way, I know you are such a dog. Oh, person. my God. Otis just joined Horrible. me. James passed. Hi, Otis. <laughs> this one this morning, I was chatting with Michaela Peterson and he decided to hack for like five minutes straight. I was like, <laughs> Otis, dude. <laughs> it's too cute to get too mad. So All right. Let's talk about egg pudding. I okay. <laughs> this is your mom's recipe. Correct. Well, yes. is it more of a traditional Right. So I give credit to my mom, but it's definitely a traditional dish that has been probably eaten since day one of time. Okay. <laughs> but uh, my mom made it for my sisters, my little brother and me ever since we were babies. And this is like a very baby friendly food. And I guess it's just so good that my mom kept making it throughout our childhood. And I forgot about it when I went vegan. Um, but then when I went back, I started craving for it. So I was like, oh, wait, mom, can't you make this carnivore? And she helped me make the first egg pudding video on Instagram. It's actually her hands cooking. Um, but ever since that video went out, it just blew up. When you grew up eating it, was it a sweetened version or was it basically like you make it now? 
it was a savory version. My mom would add soy sauce. So that would not make it carnivore, but that was kind of like a crucial addition for her egg pudding. She would make it with chicken broth with eggs, steam it like a savory version, take it out and then top it with sesame, sesame oil and soy sauce. And that's how she would serve it with us. Um, But now I just love it with butter. So I guess the butter kind of replaced the sesame oil and soy sauce. Yes. Okay. So I'm going to pull out my egg pudding here. (laughs) Me too. I have one on hand. All right. I'm going to be honest. I made this egg pudding last night, everybody. Um, and then I thought, I'm just going to have a little nibble. And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> a quarter gone. Oops. This is mine. This one's fresh, still Beautiful. warm. But uh, I love how you coined yours, um, the egg pudding pie. Everybody's obsessed with making your pie. Well, I'll tell you, I watched your video. I was at my father-in-law's house and I was watching it. My kids gathered around and they said, what is that? And I said, she's making um, an egg pudding. And as we're watching, they're like, that looks good. And I said, okay, maybe we can make this when we get home tonight. And I was watching, you had a little metal bowl. And I said, I don't have a metal bowl. And you had a little, um, what's the thing you put it on? Trivet. Trivet, yes. Yeah, the trivet, yeah. But you call um, a rat. I called it like a pedestal steaming rack. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yes, there you go. I'm like, I don't have a metal bowl or a pedestal steaming rack. And, <laughs> and then I thought I'll like MacGyver, like what would MacGyver do? Okay, I've got a metal pie pan <laughs> and oh I had a, it was a painted metal trivet, which James was like, you're going to steam a painted metal trivet. That's probably gross. <laughs> Did it anyway. And then um, okay. my friend, Karen, who I know that you know, Karen. Yes, Miles I also. love Karen. I love Karen. Oh um, gosh, she's the sweetest. She is. She sent, she's like, you got to stop using that. <laughs> my painter. Nice. So she sent me just a, a little metal steaming rack, but it, it did the trick. So you take your little pan and I did it just like yours at first. I did the water version because I didn't have broth and right. equal parts, egg, water, yeah. stir, then you yes. take um, a skillet with some water in it, put your yes. little, I use the trivet down in there and you just right. steam it. And I thought that cannot be good. It's egg, it's watery eggs. I, I know, mean, right? I tasted it. I tasted your watery eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, why am I not eating this every day? It is so good. And I see yeah. people constantly tagging you. I love that. That's just every day I go and I'm like, oh, Ew. another beautiful egg pudding. And people look so happy. So happy. Yeah. Yeah. I will <sighs> definitely tag your instructions. The exact video that I watched will be in the video sure. description. Now this okay. one is different, not just because I use the pan, but I started switching out the water for heavy cream. Now, because of that, I cannot, I should not sit down and eat this entire pie like <laughs> I can when I just use water because, right. because heavy cream, especially if I just buy one at the store, a normal cream that has the yeah. uh, carrageenan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't right. have much of that. I do get breakouts, but oh, interesting. Yeah. It's like cheese for me. I can go a little crazy. Okay. So let's get a bite here. This, okay. this, however, is some really good, like whole foods, heavy cream that I'm allowed to eat. Now, awesome. talk to me about your smirk thing. Where did the smirk oh, yeah. come from? Okay. Wow. I'm so happy. Okay. So I just created this hashtag smirk okay. and you put whatever food you're eating in front of the smirk. So let's say egg pudding smirk. Okay. All hashtag right. egg pudding smirk. Show me how you're to basically... properly smirk. Right. So you take your phone, let's say you're making a story and you're going to text okay. egg and butter gal and you take the bite, right? Okay. Hold the phone and you kind of just make a cute face, whatever face you feel cute making or sexy making. Okay. You take it. Oh, and do you get bonus points for a wink? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Here we go. Like a smirk face. Oh, my God. That's so good. <laughs> and I do think I see people making like sexy eyes at the camera when they do it. But yeah, you, you nail the smirk. That was okay. Oh, my God. That, that was, was so okay. good. I love it. not going to lie. I've practiced a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, simple like that. Just kind of like as a message without words to ladies who maybe are skeptical about eating the carnivore diet, like, hey, you can feel sexy. You can look sexy eating meat, egg pudding, butter. Yes. You know, it does give that vibe. I think women have been so taught that we're supposed to have salads and eat like dainty little tiny bites. Exactly. And that if you're going to be if you're going to be thin and fit, then you need to eat small bites. Yeah. And and 
you know, order super set like your chicken breast and a salad. Oh yeah. Eat a salad to be healthy. No, right. eat a steak. A and so then people see you and they're like, okay, woman right. looks good. <laughs> Shoving giant bites of egg and beef in her face. Yep. About how much butter do you eat per day? So I eat at least a stick like this per day. Get this is out. just a snack for me. Yeah, I know. I have always craved for fat, always from day one. And I still do. Um, but I think the cravings for fat, like the amount that I need to feel good, has definitely decreased. But okay. a stick a day is generally what I end up eating. Yeah, I, I no longer, I probably could have in the beginning. And yeah. The reason I don't know for sure is because I wasn't eating butter. I did zero dairy at all for those several Interesting. months. Yeah. yeah. And so I was eating um, fat trimmings, tons oh. of fat oh, trimmings. Oh, that counts. Yeah. Suet yeah. is amazing. Yes. But so I can't say for sure how much butter I would have eaten, but I know now, like I had honestly planned on eating part of the stick of butter on camera because that sounds fun. Yeah. I don't think I can do it right now. I would really have to force it. Oh, Whereas... then, then don't do it. If you're not craving it, don't. Like, that's the key with fats, with butter. Only yeah. eat it if you crave it. Otherwise, you might actually feel worse. Yeah. Whereas yeah. last night when I was eating that big quarter. Oh, there you go, girl. Mm -hmm. that's it. Yes. <laughs> last night, I wanted butter all over that egg pudding. Oh. That huge chunk that I ate had butter all over it. And right now, right. That, that just doesn't sound quite right to me. Mm. Uh, <laughs> that's right. the key. All right, Bella, <clears throat> I don't quite have a bone to pick with you, but I'm very curious about something. Yes. You made a video where you talk all about your girls. Oh, yeah. And um, <clears throat> I got to tell you, 11 years of eating meat, high fat carnivore. I still have some pretty tiny little titties. <laughs> uh, breasts. I do not have voluptuous breasts, Bella. Mm -hmm. And what do you think? what am I doing wrong? Yeah, I, okay. So I thought about this a lot because, okay. you know, we talked about this, you know, while we were hanging out on Instagram and yeah. stuff, I made a video about it. And I think that sparked a lot of ladies interests. And I talked to quite a few ladies just about breast size. Okay. And I've had a few carnivore ladies come out and text me saying, Oh yeah, my breasts also grew, you know? Okay. And I asked them, what do you think it is? Because for me, I think it's because of all of the fats that I'm eating. It's the fats that are fueling my body to kind of like regulate my hormones. Uh -huh. I think because my hormones are normal and healthy and my period is back, my boobs are growing with it. Okay. But like people ask, oh, but are your boobs bigger because you got fatter? No, because my body is leaner overall, but my boobs are bigger. So, you know, this may be TMI for some people, but like when my period became healthy, I noticed everywhere that I wanted to, you know, shrink, it shrunk. And then everywhere I wanted to be a little bit more, you know, it was. Okay. And I think maybe it's because of all the butter I was eating and the raw cheese. I do feel like it's the dairy. There's something in the dairy, but the raw dairy. You know, do you I eat much cheese now? Now I've been eating a lot more pasteurized cheese, which okay. I can confirm to everyone watching. This is an update. The okay. pasteurized cheese is no good. Um, <laughs> like the pasteurized dairy. Yeah. Not only is it addicting, but it creates issues on my skin. I yes. got some bumps. Yeah. Have a pimple, you know, for the first time in a very long time. And the only thing I changed was the pasteurized cheese. But um, the raw, the raw cheeses that I've eaten, um, no negative symptoms. Okay. And I feel like that really helped with my feminine figure. I really think because raw cheese, raw dairy, all the nutrients, all of the good gut bacteria, probiotics, everything is still intact. It's fresh. It's alive. Yeah. Also raw kefir. That's something that I really incorporated over the summer. And I would say it's over the summer where I was like, whoa, my body's like, you know, kind of changing. Yeah. And my boyfriend also noticed it. And if you want like concrete proof, my cup size went from B, like edge of the B plus, I would uh -huh. say, to now C. So, you know, yeah. it's, something's changing. <laughs> I'm definitely more in the B realm. I mean, okay. James, James is a leg man, so it's not a huge deal. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It matters, yeah. Yeah, but, you know, I check you out sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think. That looks really good. I could maybe go for a little bit more of that. Um, but this is just all personal uh, experience and what I've uh, seen with my own body. Yeah. Yeah. So interesting. There are yeah. long-time carnivores. Uh, 
Charlene Anderson, over 20 oh, yes. years carnivore. Yeah. Dana, she's 13 years carnivore. Yeah. They, mm, they are curvy women. They are. And they yeah. definitely have very thin waist and they're definitely chesty. Mm-hmm. Um, so I know that carnivores do typically have that kind of body shape to them i'm sure part of it is genetics but man my mom she's stacked (laughs) oh really yeah Yeah, i do think the genetics are quite a big part of it like my mom has great body you know big boobs and stuff (laughs) and yeah but like you look absolutely amazing too i see your photos what are you talking about (laughs) well it's just um they're still pretty small i don't know i'm okay with it just it's okay. When I oh. think one reason I'm so okay with it is because I did used to be so heavy. Oh. And so when I weighed 260 pounds, they were huge. Oh, huge. And mm-hmm. so it's almost now like a relief because there it was, yeah. everything was so big. You know, I've also nursed three kids. So that may play a part, mm-hmm. but I do think in the since I weaned Annie a couple years ago, I think they're looking a little bit better. They got to okay. recover from that. Yeah. They're kind of like sad balloons when you first finish nursing. Like that's what I heard. Yeah. Balloons. It's, yeah. At least for me, it was pretty sad, but they're looking better than that. All right. Okay, pretty good. good little boob chat there. Have you seen your hair grow? Um, I don't cut my hair. So, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the length it is now, I mean, it's long. Yeah. But I literally just let it break off naturally. I don't even cut my hair. Oh. I mean, I haven't had my hair cut in, I don't even know when, years. No. I, have to, I trim my bangs myself just so they're not in my eyes. But your hair is so thick and luscious. Oh, well, thank you, babe. That's beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, like but- I've, al- I've always suffered with thin hair, like not enough hair. Mm-hmm. I would be very self-conscious. And I think it's also because whenever I perform, my mom would always do it like ballerina style, like super oh, tight yeah. ponytail. And that amount of tugging caused a lot of hair loss. Um, and when I went vegan, it also didn't help with the hair growth. Uh-huh. Um, but you see, like I'm, I'm getting baby hair. Yeah, I see, I see right now that you're pointing it out. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like this part was not here just months ago. So that's something else. If you ladies are trying to, you know, feel if you should go carnivore for hair growth, carnivore is great. Yeah. I have not had trouble. So when I first lost a lot of weight, my hair got very thin for a while. Yeah. And also every time I would deliver a kid, my hair would get thin and then I would deal with all the little baby hairs coming back. Oh. So, But in general, um, I just let it grow. Oh. Okay. So we're going to say goodbye to each other here in just a minute. Okay. But after we say bye, we are going to then um, have a video of us playing a little piano piece together. And I'm very excited. Yes. So I picked a little four-handed piano piece for Bella and I to play together that um, I knew would not require a lot of practice for me and that I knew she could play with her eyes closed. <laughs> literally and (laughs) but a beautiful piece but I thought it is a beautiful piece Mm -hmm. but I thought how rare to have two total carnivores yeah who play the piano and if Dr. Saladino and Dr. Baker ended any podcast together playing a four-handed piano piece I would be so there for that right Yeah. yeah I mean any carnivores showing up playing together, I would love that. So I'm not sure if anyone else cares to watch pianist carnivores, but we're going to do it. Bella, yes. thank you for, you are always positive. And we've spoken, we've spoken to each other privately, like te- messaging a lot and some voicemails back and forth. Yes. And I have to say, I have literally never heard you say anything negative about any other human and I cannot even tell you how res- how much I respect that it's yeah. almost unheard of these days because I think so many people feel like they have to push other people down to pull themselves up or something mm-hmm. but you do not do that mm-hmm. and and I've even asked you a couple of questions that would have allowed you to do that if you wanted to mm-hmm. and you didn't and I really, wow. I liked I that. Test. You did. I wasn't really trying to test you. I just I sort of realized afterwards that you could have gone there and you never right. have. And you're always, yeah. I feel like you're honest when you come onto Instagram, but I think, um, and I try to do this too. You also try to give people hope and some encouragement and mm-hmm. try to keep, there's enough negativity that I just love seeing what you put out into the world. So thank Absolutely. you for doing that. 
Thank you, Kelly. You are a ray of sunshine for the carnival <laughs> community. You inspire me too. So Thanks. yeah, kindness and love. Kindness and love and a whole bunch of meat and butter. Yes. How about that? Yes. There's a t-shirt for you. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, Bella. And uh, we'll send them thank off with a song here.